Y'all check it out. Right now, I am in Austria. And now, I am in Italy. <laughs> Italy? Austria. Italy, Austria, and both! <laughs> oh no! Good morning, everybody. Hello there. Eric and Allison coming at you once again for DW Travel. Mm -hmm. Our electric camper van road trip is finally coming to an end. Yes. We have arrived to our final charging station of the trip. It went by so fast, too fast maybe. As you guys saw, we had some troubles with charging the vehicle, stations not working, stations not being properly marked on the map, all kinds of stuff. But we have found that we have the best luck with these Ionity chargers. They have worked every time. They are mm -hmm. very fast and very reliable. So that's the one we looked up for our final charging station mm -hmm. because we have to get to the airport in just a few hours for our trip yes. back to the USA. Yes, yeah, so we can't be late. We tried to leave ourselves a little bit of wiggle room, but we don't have that much, so it kind of has to all work out perfectly. And so far, finally, it is. We're gonna be flying out of Munich, so our trip is going to end right where it began. Mm -hmm. We have gone a whopping 2,000 or so kilometers on this trip. Our goal in this final installment, we are going to get back on the road. We're gonna try to make it to the airport in time to not miss our flight. Mm -hmm. But we also wanted to share with you guys our final thoughts, what it was like traveling in the electric camper van. Would we do it again? Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. This was our first time ever in an electric vehicle, let alone an electric camper van doing a road trip. So we learned a lot and we have a, a lot of, I guess, new knowledge that we can hopefully share with you if you're thinking about booking one of these. But yeah, I think we're gonna get all charged up and then hit the road. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you there. So Allison has been doing most of the driving, mainly because I've been filming and finding all the charging stations. <laughs> and sleeping a little bit. Yes, a little bit. <laughs> so what has it been like now that you've driven this electric vehicle for about two weeks? Yeah, it's been very interesting. There were things to learn. For example, you have three different levels of power when you're driving. If you're going downhill, for example, you're in the green charge area where it's actually charging your battery for you. When you hit a good cruising speed, you're in the eco mode, so you're using some of the battery, but efficiently. And then when you have to speed up, go really fast, you get into the power mode and that seems to drain the battery quite a bit. So I've been trying to not go up into that top power mode, which means that I speed up a lot more slowly. And also the top cruising speed is around 110 kilometers per hour. So I'm slower in general. So it's, I felt a little bad on some roads. I feel like um, we're the slow pokes. A huge part of the learning curve, as you guys saw, was just figuring out how to charge properly, which charger works for our type of vehicle. Mm -hmm. You guys saw that we we went to the Tesla charger station, which fits ours, but it doesn't charge it. Doesn't charge it. <laughs> in the PlugShare app that we've been using to find places to charge, if you search for the orange one, which I believe is the CCS2 type, that is the type that fits ours, but has these two extra prongs, which make it charge a lot faster. Mm -hmm. The supercharger. Yeah. At first, we were just searching for the green ones, which can take five hours to charge. So when we were plugging it in, we were like, well, this isn't really going to work because we're only going to be here for about an hour. And then really just planning the route ahead of time as much as possible and having a fail safe. So if we find one that looks like it's gonna work we just kind of assume that that might not work and then we find another one that's close by or at least within like yes. 10 or 20 kilometers always have a backup we've really just been trying to stay above a quarter charge on the battery and that seems to have gotten us everywhere we needed to go yeah we didn't break down on the side of the road we didn't no. need a tow i'm pretty happy about I that i know i'm pretty proud of us because we had some big driving days i guess also if you're planning your route i wouldn't go over more than 200 kilometers in one drive Otherwise, you could potentially run into trouble or just constantly be having to find extra charging stations along your route. Sleeping in the van has been very interesting. For us, it's not that big of a deal because we've slept in a lot of confined spaces. We've stayed in a lot of camper vans. We've stayed in a lot of tiny houses, but I could see how it wouldn't be for everybody because it is quite cramped back there. It is, but with two of us, both with two suitcases and two backpacks and food, I wouldn't say it ever felt too crowded in here. Yeah, it was manageable, at least for us. Yes. 
One of our goals at the beginning of this trip when we set out was to just create less waste. Since we're in an electric vehicle, we were like, all right, let's try to make a little bit less trash on this road trip. And in general, I feel like we succeeded. We did make a bit of trash. And as you guys have seen, we've been recycling along the way. And Europe has made that very, very easy because there are recycling centers like this all over the place. We did have just a couple plastic bottles. If we wanted to get water at the hotel, they would usually put it in a plastic bottle. And then of course we did have a few glass bottles, mostly wine and beer. And we actually haven't purchased one single use coffee cup this entire trip, which that's a lot for us because <laughs> we drink a lot of coffee, you guys. All right, we're all charged up. We're all recycled up. Let's hit the road. This is some of our favorite scenery. Yeah, we are just driving through all these hills. We are in the clouds right now. There's just clouds wrapping all around all the hills and mountains and forest land. This trip is really throwing all this beauty at us at the very end. I know, <laughs> it's like the most beautiful drive ever. Yeah. And then we're gonna go straight from this to being on an airplane for hours with yeah. a bunch of yokels. But all right, we have about 45 minutes to Munich. We're going to drop off the car. Hopefully there's no damage that we're not aware of. <laughs> I don't remember hitting anything. <laughs> yeah. And then it's gonna be off to the airport. We've dropped off our camper van. All was well. <laughs> I'm kind of sad to leave it behind now. Yeah. It was so much fun. It was. Bye space tour. <laughs> Just like that, our incredible road trip through Europe is it's over. Over, <laughs> I'm so sad it's over. Yeah. As you can see, we traded in our nice fancy electric vehicle for our old gas guzzler here. But man, we really squeezed the last little bits out of summer while we were traveling through Italy. Oh, because yeah. as you can see behind us, it is very, very fall right now. 100% fall. Yeah, but the plus side of that is it's very beautiful. The leaves are changing all over the place, mm -hmm. it's awesome. We had such an incredible time traveling through Europe, saw so many amazing sights, met so many awesome people, had a blast. If you missed any of our European road trip adventure, all those videos are gonna be linked in the description below. Mm -hmm. So check it out. And we wanna give a huge thank you to DW Travel for helping us coordinate this whole adventure. We had such a blast. It was such a unique experience and we couldn't have done it without them. That's all for us, you guys, for now. We'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.